Hello, 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 and welcome to the Where to Start YouTube series. My name is Clyde Hampton, aka Champion Yogi, and thank you for joining me here today. I am here in the beautiful One Raw Yoga Studio in Sanford, Florida. I teach my Sunday yoga classes here, my Ocean Wave classes. So if you want to come and join me for a Sunday class at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, I'm here. Pull up. Have fun with me. <laughs> Today we're going to be learning that air walker headstand. Okay, so we're going to be getting that head down, learning how to walk the feet toward the sky. Remember, this is a four part series over the course of the next four weeks. So maybe you don't get to that headstand air walker today. Maybe you don't even get to it in the four weeks. But doing these practices that I'm about to offer you in the next couple of weeks is going to help you get yourself to that space. Let's set our intentions first so we make sure we understand why we're here. I want you to be here to learn more awareness in your body, right? That air walker headstand is not only going to help you be stronger and be able to do cool yoga things, right? But the most important thing is going to make you learn your body. It's going to give you more awareness of how your body works, how you use your body, how you use these muscles versus these muscles, and keep these muscles stable versus moving those muscles, right? So it gives you more awareness of your body. That's going to help you out in your all-around life and definitely in your yoga practice moving forward to be a little stronger, right? So, Let's get started. Let's hop into why we're here. Come on down to your mat. Have a nice seated space. We're going to get started with some warm ups today. You never want to get into any type of practice or anything like that before you give your body the proper space to warm up. If you like an easy pose like I do, feel free to sit in the easy pose. If you like your legs out long like this, you can do that a little wider like this. Maybe you want to come to your knees and this is a more comfortable space for you to sit. A bolster, a chair, any of those kind of things. We're just warming up the body. The most important muscles today that we want to warm up is our wrist our core muscles and our neck muscles. We're going to start working towards that headstand today. Maybe not getting in the headstand today, but working towards that headstand today. And so we want to make sure those muscles in the body have had a little bit of movement. And this is not going to be the first time getting anything today before we get into these things. So with this being said, let's get started right here. Bring the palms together, interlace the fingers. And you're just going to roll the wrist around like this a little bit. You're finding all those different spaces, all that different movement, giving yourself that freedom to warm up the mobility in your wrist. I would say you want to do this for at least three minutes, maybe even five minutes. If you feel like you're risking a little more, always feel free to have more. But less is maybe not as safe. You want to make sure your wrists have the space and the time to really get warm. If you're in an environment where it's going to be cold outside, I would suggest doing a little bit more. If you're in an environment where you're already hot and sweaty as soon as you sit down, then sure, you can do a little bit less, right? So make that judgment call for yourself. Make sure you give yourself the time to warm up. We're also going to warm up the neck here. So what I want you to do is I want you to take your head and you're going to roll it all the way around to get your full neck movement here. Okay. So you're going to start with your chin coming down into your chest and then your roll. So your right ear comes to your right shoulder. Your back of your head will come to your back. The left ear will come to your left shoulder and then your chin will come back down to your chest. Take a few times to allow the head to roll all the way around and remember to take it nice and slow. Also counterclockwise, right? So go back in the opposite direction as well, rolling all the way around. As you lift your head back to the top, you want to go to the left a little bit and then go to the right a little bit. Just again, allowing your neck to get that full range of motion so we don't have any stiffness, any tightness. And then up and down, looking up and looking down a few times. Make sure you do all these a good amount of time to get yourself nice and warm, okay? So with that being said, we also want to start talking about what's going to happen into the neck, okay? If you're doing any of these warm-ups at any given time and you start to feel a tightness, a stiffness, an ache, or pain, or anything like that, keep yourself safe. Don't decide to go forward with this series yet. I know how bad you really want to be able to do those air walkers, right? But don't decide to go forward with the series yet. Take a break. Take yourself Go get checked out. Go figure out what's going on with you and make sure that you're able to be safe and in a comfortable space to be able to do this. OK, next up, core muscles. We want to come to our tabletop position. Once you come to your tabletop position, you want to find your shoulders over your wrists, hips over your knee. You're going to separate your hands as wide as your shoulders. Separate your fingertips nice and wide as well. Separate your knees as wide as your hands and then separate your feet as wide as your knees. And right here in this tabletop position, we're just going to start working into the core with a cat cow. Here's a little note. Cat cow is a super, super, super important warm up when it comes down to getting into the headstand. When we bring our head down and we start to stack our bodies, 
rolling your hips back to be able to get the hips to stack over the shoulders is much, much, much more important than almost any other part of this. So really understanding how your cat cow works and being able to use it in a different position is what's going to come into play a whole lot. Okay. So in that tabletop position, let's start working on that cat cow. We're going to take an inhale. Your belly will start to sink down towards the mat, right? Those hips are going to rotate forward so the belly can sink down. And then you're going to take your gaze up to find a little bit of a back bend to keep those shoulders stacked. And then on your exhale, pull your chin into your chest, let your belly button roll up to your spine, and then find this space, trying to look at your belly so you really get that back. And then do these a few times, do a few breaths, maybe like three to five of these, both inhales and exhales, allowing that space to really move, be free. But again, bring a lot of awareness to what's happening in the hips because you're going to need that motion to really start to find that good, comfortable head stand, okay? Good. Now, once we have that, we'll get started working on our headstand for today. Again, wrist. We need the hands and the wrist to be in a good place. So we're just going to start by finding how to bring your head down to the mat. And when you start bringing your head down to the mat, it's all about shifting those elbows. You want that good L shape into your elbows. And you're trying to bring your very forehead down to the mat. Okay. So hands down, nice and stacked. Find your tabletop. You're just going to lower your forehead down right next to your tips of your fingers, right in between the tips of your finger, okay? So bend the elbows, squeeze them into your side, lower your forehead down to the mat, and have that comfortable space right there. And then press into those hands, roll yourself all the way back up, and come back to that stack. Have a few of those right there. Get comfortable with that. Bringing that forehead down to the mat, and then lifting the head all the way back up. Find that good space. That's also going to help out your chaturangas a lot, which is going to help out a lot of your arm balances in, in general. But it's going to give you the space to start to find the top of your head. After that, we're going to roll forward to start to bring yourself to the top of the head, okay? So you're going to take your body weight and push it forward once your forehead is down. And the weight will roll from your forehead all the way up to the top. You want the very top of your head to come down when you come to your headstand. So with the hands now, bring the forehead down to the mat again, and then push your weight forward so your forehead comes down to the mat and you can start looking towards your toes. Your chin is coming towards your chest a little bit, and that may feel a little uncomfortable as you first start to come to it, but don't worry, as we get ready to start going towards the headstand, the chin and the chest won't be such a thing anymore, okay? So practice that a few rounds as well, bringing the forehead down to the mat, and then roll to the top of the head so you can look at the toes, and then bring it all the way back up and find that comfortable space again. You're trying Trying to find that comfort on top of your head. And again, if you roll to the top of your head and you feel a sharp pain or anything like that, give yourself some space. Stop. Take a break. Go figure out what's going on. Go see a doctor. Get checked out. Make sure you're in a safe space to be able to do things like this before we move forward. Okay? And now, we're going to start to find that headstand. This is where we're at. This is what we're working for. This is our step one. Okay? Walking those toes toward the face. As you bring your forehead down and you roll to the top of your head, you're going to start walking your toes toward your face. You're going to tuck your toes under, lift your knees up, and start to walk them towards your face. Your hips are going to start to come over your head, and then we'll start explaining why that cat cow is so important. Okay? So with the hands down, bend into those elbows, squeeze them into your sides. Lower your forehead down to the mat. Start to press the weight forward so you can roll to the very top of the head. And right here is where you're going to tuck the toes and maybe start to lift the hips up a little bit. And then just take tiny steps, walking the feet towards the head. And you're trying to push your hips over your head, okay? Now, for some of us, walking our feet towards our face is going to present a little bit of a challenge. Once you get to a certain point, it's going to start to feel a little tight and maybe you can't go any further than that. If you can't quite push your hips over your head yet, you're not going to be ready for the headstand yet. So take the time, walk in and out, roll back to your forehead, roll back to the top of your head to be able to find that good comfortable space, okay? Forehead down, tuck the toes, roll to the top of the head, walk in, you're trying to push the hips over the head and then you're trying to be able to walk it back to the forehead as you come back up now inversions head down hips up they can make you a little bit dizzy as you come back out of them if this is your first time doing them or you're new to them bringing your head back up off the floor can have the ability to make you dizzy so take your time maybe keep your head down for a few seconds after you come out of it and then slowly bring yourself back up until you get more and more and more comfortable with it and then you can start moving at a little bit of a quicker pace but remember give yourself some space especially if you're getting started and this is your first opportunity today okay now as you bring the forehead down you roll to the top of the head, you tuck the toes, and you start walking the feet over the head. Your hips are going to come right over your head. You're going to find this nice stack space. Remember, you have this comfortable shape into your elbows, and you're nice and stacked into the space. And this 
as you can see, my hips are still falling forward in the same direction of my face. And that's going to make my head stand really hard because all the weight is still falling down towards my feet. So right here, what you want to start to doing is that cat cow. Press your belly towards your toes and roll those hips back, right? And that's what's going to give your feet the ability to start to float off the mat. Now, that might be tough. And maybe you don't get it in the first try. Maybe you don't get it in the first day. And that's okay. You're going to come back to your tabletop position. And again, strengthen your core muscles right here by letting the belly sink down and the gaze rise up. And then pulling that belly button towards the spine, chin into your chest. This action is going to increase all of that core strength in here. And it's going to give you the space to be able to start to lift those hips up. We don't necessarily have to lift those hips up to get to that, that headstand just yet. But that is a good strong space that we're going to need in order to be able to do that air walk. So focus on that cat cow, get that belly to back movement going, keep those hands in a good space. Remember, keep squeezing those elbows in. You can use a strap around your elbows if they keep popping out to start to work on keeping them in. Keep that strap around the elbow, find that good placement, forehead down, roll to the top of your head, tuck those toes, and just walking your feet closer towards your face, trying to get your hips over. If you can use a wall, you can bring your head very close to the wall and just keep walking until your hips touch the wall and then walk yourself back. That's going to be a good space for you to start to try to work on your headstand, find some comfort in being on top of your head, find some comfort in your hands and figuring out if there's going to be any complications that you need to address before we get into that air walker headstand. That's it. That's all for step one. That's all for day one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here with me today. We're going to roll into day two next week, same day. And then once I bring you that, we'll talk about the next things. Always remember you can come back to this video to revisit these things if you need to before you move forward with the next video. But the next video is going to be a little bit more challenging, but it's going to get us a little bit closer to that air walker. I want to thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me here today. Always remember, come to any of my social media platforms at c.hemp.ionyogi and feel free to sign up for any private lessons if you want a little bit more attention from me. Or if you're just enjoying the, the YouTube videos, feel free to come back next week. And I'll have the next stage for you right here. Thank you.